Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky, if you're new, and we are in my kitchen, but we're not gonna spend too much time in the kitchen today. We are heading off to my mom's house to plant out her green stock for Mother's Day. I got my mom and my sister both a green stock, and we are gonna head out to my mom's to plant her green stock out. She's gonna do it a little different than I am, so I wanna show you the way that we're gonna plant her green stock out, and then when t if time allows, I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna plant two of my four green stocks out. We should be past our last frost date, nighttime temperatures for the next 10 days are 55 degrees. So I am really excited what time of year it is currently. I have about a 35 minute drive to go to my mom's house. So while I'm on the drive, I'm gonna show you what I prepped for dinner. This is completely brand new. I've never done this before. We have a lasagna in the crock pot. So I made this up this morning before I got ready. I have it here i have it on low i think i'm actually going to go ahead and put it on keep warm and then when i'm on my way home from my mom's house i maybe will text josh and ask him to put it on low again so we have dinner ready i have a simple salad in the fridge we're going to have with dinner and so when we get back after we plant my mom's green stock out my green stocks out hopefully if we have time which we should then i will show you how a lasagna in the crock pot works one of my goals is to try to get more comfortable using my crock pot and not just doing soups in it because that's typically what I do. So I will show you that and I will see you back when we're at my mom's house. This recipe was extremely easy to throw together. I just Googled a bunch of different lasagna crock pot recipes and they were all pretty similar. So I just found one that had pretty good reviews. Well, excellent reviews. I can link it down below. And I went ahead and I decided to make that one. It probably took a total of about 15 minutes to throw this together. So the first thing I did was get the Italian sausage on the stove to cook. Now this recipe did call for ground beef, but last night I pulled out a thing of Italian sausage because I assumed that's what the recipes would call for. <laughs> and uh, this one in particular called for ground beef, but Italian sausage is what I usually use in lasagna. So I figured that substitution would be just fine. It would just add a little extra flavor. And then I did also grab a thing of shredded mozzarella from the freezer last night so that that would be thawed and ready. And I wouldn't even have to shred the mozzarella for this dinner. I did run out into the grow room and I grabbed a couple basil leaves because the basil plants are just big enough to start harvesting. They are pretty small still, but they will not be hurt by getting some of those leaves removed. Basil is one of the herbs that the more you harvest, the more it's going to produce. So I needed to top those basil plants anyway, so might as well top them and put them in tonight's dinner. So now that the sausage was nice and browned, I went ahead and added the onion that we chopped, and now we're going to make the cheese filling layer. Now this is going to be ricotta cheese, salt, pepper, those basil leaves. I did wash the basil leaves and an egg and I'm going to mix that together and that was super simple. And then I'm going to shred some Parmesan cheese because I didn't have any of that. Now I did want to mention that Greenstock is having a Mother's Day sale, which seems appropriate because we are going to set up my mom's Greenstock for Mother's Day, which I got for her. I actually got my sister one for Mother's Day as well, but she has not set hers up yet. And I'm excited to see what she does with hers. And my mom is going to set it up a little bit different than I'm setting up mine. And we do get to mine as well today. And so I'm excited to share with you what she does and then what I do. And if you missed out on the sale that was early March, no worries. There is a sale that is running from May 8th through the 15th. And if you use my discount code ACRE, you get an extra $10 off the sale price. So it's a pretty fantastic deal. And if you missed out on the sale in March, no worries. You can go ahead and grab one now. And they make a fantastic gift. Like I said, I got one for my mom and for my sister. So now that we have the cheese taken care of for the lasagna, we're going to go ahead and finish the red sauce. I added some red wine. The recipe called for a cup of water, and I had a bottle of red wine that needed to be used up. So I thought I would go ahead and substitute the red wine for the water. And then I added a puck of the garlic. That's the garlic from last year's garden that I blended up and I froze using a cookie scoop in the freezer. And I just threw one of those in there and didn't have to chop my own garlic, which is always a win-win. It's not my favorite thing to do. Now I added one pint, or excuse me, one quart of tomato sauce. Now this tomato sauce is different than the tomato sauces I've done in the past. This last summer, I canned my tomato sauce with my homegrown onions, homegrown garlic, and tomatoes. I blended all of that together, 
and then I threw that in the pressure canner. And so I pressure canned my tomato products because I added the onions and garlic instead of water bath canning. When you water bath can tomatoes, you have to add lemon juice to make sure it's an acidic enough for safe water bath canning. Well, tomatoes can already be kind of acidic. And a lot of times when I make red sauces, I have to add just a little bit of sugar to help balance the acidity. And I thought this last year, why don't I just pressure can it? I like pressure canning. Now that I have the hang of it, it's almost easier than water bath canning because you're not dealing with all the water. And if I pressure can it, then I don't have to add the lemon juice and then potentially I don't have to add the sugar and I can also add garlic and onions to it. So it just makes it an even better product. And it is fantastic. I will probably never water bath can my tomato products again, just because I don't have to add the lemon juice. And I didn't, I, all the red sauces I've been making this year, I have not had to add any sugar because it's not extra acidic. So I'm really happy with that. So I'm probably going to do that moving forward. So now I just assembled the lasagna like you would in a nine by 13. I don't know if this was any less work or more work doing it in the crock pot, but the idea is that it's going to be easier because it's going to cook while I'm doing other things today, but time will tell whether it's worth this or not. So I went ahead and I just layered it like you normally would. I like to top it with cheese and then we're going to put it in the crock pot. It's about 6.30 in the morning, I think, when I was doing this. And so I started it on low, and then I thought, that's going to be way too much cooking time. I'm going to put it on keep warm, and so that's what I did. So I, I put it on low while I showered and got ready for the day, and then I put it on keep warm. And I'm excited to see how well, <laughs> well this turns out. The recipe had fantastic reviews, and I can link it down below if you're interested in it. And the baby was still napping, so I thought I would take a minute here to go ahead and finish getting the kitchen cleaned so that when I came home after helping my mom and then playing out in my garden, that I wouldn't have to think about cleaning the kitchen as well. So I'm going to clean this, and then I'm going to go get ready, and then I'm going to go ahead to my mom's house. So I'll meet you over there. We just got to my mom's house. She's putting on her boots right now, and her green stock is here. My dad went ahead and laid out a tarp here so that when we fill it with this soil, we can just sweep the patio and we're not gonna make a huge mess, which I think is a great idea. And so she's coming out in a second. Let me show you all the fun stuff she bought. She bought a bunch of stuff cause she's got a little garden. We can go over there in a little bit and I can show you her garden. Um, but yeah, I brought them out for you. Go right there. My mom's looking for the gloves that I brought out for her. But she got a ton of really fun stuff here. So what we have here are some strawberries that my mom is gonna be planting mostly in the green stock, but she's got some other fun things too over here that she's gonna plant in the green stock. The variety she chose are hoods, which are our favorite, and they are ever bearing strawberries. Oh, and look, I got this other one. I don't know what kind it is, uh, Hawaiian. Oh wow, Wouldn't that be fun? Don't you think the grandkids would love picking white strawberries? Yeah, it has red seeds, that's cool. Isn't that cool? My mom's vision for her green stock is for it to be a strawberry tower, kind of like what I did last year. And her vision is that the grandkids are gonna be able to pick and enjoy the strawberries from it all summer long. And there's two different varieties of strawberries or two different styles. One called June bearing. They usually produce a big harvest of strawberries in June, hence the name. And then ever bearing strawberries, strawberries that produce fruit all year and hence the name Everbearing. So my mom chose Everbearing because she wants the grandkids to be able to enjoy them all year. I have some herbs that I want to put in the green stock as well for the kitchen. Some thyme, some parsley, some oregano, some sage. I was a little concerned about putting sage out because we've had such a cold, cold spring. But I looked at the weather and last night was the coldest it's going to get. So I think this should be fine. And then I've got some salad uh, greens to put in there that I can just chop, some lettuce, some arugula, some spinach, uh, bright chards. I just love how pretty these are. Uh, and some more arugula. And then of course peas can go out very easily right now. Sugar snaps. And those are going in your main garden. Yes, though, right? those, yeah, those are in the main garden. And the potatoes are obviously in the main garden. And I have three varieties of de indeterminate potatoes. That means they continue to grow the whole season. They don't just stop and be mature at this size. So you can continue to mound them and have layer after layer of potatoes. So I can get a much higher yield in my much smaller space. 
compared to Becky's giant <laughs> uh, garden space. Do you want to start unpacking that? I would love to. It has been in the in the uh, living room. <laughs> Tempting or, her. <laughs> yes, well, and everybody that comes over wants to know what is in this box. Why is this box in your living room? And I said, I have strict orders for Becky. <laughs> I cannot open it yet. But we can open it today and we're going to plant it out. So I you have carried it and ripped it accidentally. That's so okay. I did not do this. <laughs> <laughs> he carried it like this and it popped. So if you hear that the water in the background, my parents have a koi pond. Some of these kois we've had since I was five years old that we bought little tiny. They lived in a fish tank in our basement for a long time. When they got big enough, we put them out in a pond. So some of these kois are 25, 28 years old. And so my mom is unpacking this, it. This is the wheelie part. Yes, that's the base. So I'm gonna help my mom and we're just gonna start unpacking the screen stock. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> So I didn't realize that I had ordered my mom the trellising pieces as well. You can plant tomatoes and peas and things that vine in a green stock. I've never done it because I don't have those trellising pieces. We're not going to set that up today because that's not what my I didn't realize and so my mom didn't plan for that. So we're not going to use that today but that's really cool because in the future, mom we need to fill it with soil first. I know but I was trying to see if that's what we indeed do. Yep, I remember that's taking apart yours. That's exactly what you do. Okay yep. and then the next one just sets right on top. Oh. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> the tube that my mom is putting in the base, what that is is for drainage. So you can kind of position that where you want the water to drain because you water this from the top. I'll, we'll show you how that works when we get to it. But you don't have to water all the different sides. That's kind of what the cool thing about a green stock is. But before we get to watering, we need to fill up all these layers. So the the potting mix you want to put in a green stock needs to be super light and fluffy. You don't want to use anything that says raised bed mix, topsoil. It needs to be a high quality potting mix because you don't want it to become super dense and compact. It needs to stay super light and fluffy. And it does help if there is some sort of fertilizer in it. So what my mom bought had an extended release fertilizer which was great. And you want to make sure you fill it all the way to the top. It even says on the plastic container to fill it all the way to the edge. We probably even could have put a little bit more. We didn't. The reason you want to do that is because this stuff is so light and fluffy. As you water it, it does kind of come back, compact down a little bit. It worked fine because my mom, we didn't fill it all the way to the tippity top we could have probably put a little bit more in there but my mom is using starts which have soil you know the the strawberry or the vegetable comes with soil around it so we didn't fill it to the top but if you're going to put seeds or something in it you do want to make sure it's filled all the way to the top because as you water it and it compacts you're going to lose the volume of the soil just by the nature of it so that's why it does say to go ahead and just fill it to the top so that's what I'm doing here. And it really helped to have this blue tarp down. I think this was genius, my dad, my dad's idea. And I am going to take that and run with it. And anytime and every time I need to fill up a green stock, I am going to definitely put a tarp down. Now, you don't have to buy new potting soil every single year for a green stock or even for pots and things like that. You can reuse potting soil but they say that you do want to remove about 20% of it and add about 20% more compost to it. And that way you can kind of give the soil some more nutrients and some more life for when you go to plant in it the next year. So I'll talk more about that next year when I obviously am done with the green stock and I plant with it. So now that we have everything filled, we can go ahead and stack them. I got my mom this green stock that has different layers to it or different sizes to it. So all my green stocks, all of the containers are all the exact same size, but this one's kind of cool because the bottom ones are the larger size and the top ones are the smaller size. 
so put one strawberry, split them apart, and put one in each. Yep. That's what you think. A lot of these strawberry plants that this my mom bought have more than one plant in it, so we will separate. So here's two plants. This one has three plants. Uh, I'm going to have to take some soil out to get yeah. this in. Yeah, I think that I did bare roots, I guess, when I did it, oh. so we'll just sweep up all the soil and put it in the wheelbarrow. Now I can put more soil back in, but I couldn't get it in there. So you that. don't want, when you're planting strawberries, you want to make sure you keep the crown. So the very top part of that plant, you you don't want to bury that part of the plant. So like that, you yeah, can that see the perfect. fuzzy part. Yep, that looks it's kind of fuzzy. And these are already flowering, so you might be getting strawberries here. Okay, so this is two. Yeah, I think so. I was reading up on strawberries, and it said when you're planting them in containers, to cut the runners. Um, keep trimming the runners. And that way the energy goes into the original plant, flowering, and fruit, rather than spreading. And there's no place for it to go, yeah. but down on the patio. So. I said earlier that these are year-round bearing strawberries, which is absolutely not the case. Everbearing does not mean that they produce fruit all year long. It just means that they produce fruit all growing season. And so I just wanted to clarify that, that I don't think there's any strawberry that would produce a strawberry in the winter or fall, or maybe early fall, but definitely not into the winter. So now we're going to take this time and we're going to separate the strawberry plants. And I'm going to help my mom. I end up separating them and then she's the one that plants them so that's one tip or trick i guess when you're purchasing if you're purchasing strawberry plants is look at the ones that have the most plants in them and that way you get a better bang for your buck and my mom was saying to cut the runners if you're growing in containers well you don't have to toss the runners away strawberries propagate themselves and so they shoot off these runners and you can actually cut those off and instead of composting them or throwing them away you could pop them into another pot and you got yourself another free strawberry plant and so strawberries are kind of cool that way so you can see a better view here how this green stock has different sizes so the bottom three tiers are the original size and and I have two of those that I just got this year and I've never planted anything in them. And then the top three of my mom's are the leaf size. So if you kind of want to see the difference between the two, this is a perfect example because you can see them right next to each other. This day was overcast, but this is the, the beginning of what feels like real spring to us. So we've had some pretty kind of icky weather. It's been quite a bit snowier than it normally is and after this day where it's a Friday where we're here planting this it ends up turning and we are now in 60 to 70 and tomorrow it's supposed to be 85 <laughs> so it's definitely starting to feel like spring around here and I am here for it so the bottom three tiers my mom has in strawberries and then the top three she is going to be planting in her veggies and her herbs. I love the idea of an herb garden for a green stock. The cool thing about green stocks is that you can really maximize your space. They take up about two square feet and you can have, you know, 60 different plants in a two square foot radius, which is pretty cool. I'm going to take home all these pots. I love recycling pots when I can. And I'm going to start my zucchini, summer squash, and winter squash in these because they're really, really big, which is going to be perfect. And then it took six cubic feet to fill this one green stock. Okay, now we should kind of clean this mess out of here, right? Yeah, I would think so. We could probably use a hose. And, wash and instead of outside. watering just from the top, we could kind of wash the whole thing off. But we might want to sweep all this yeah, stuff we up, first. This up first. So none of this soil is going to go to waste that's on this blue tarp. We're going to go ahead and grab the tarp once I wheel off the green stalk. And we are going to take all my mom's veggie starts to her garden. She's got, well, I'll show you in just a second what she has over there. And it's amazing how much 
she can produce throughout the summer in her garden. So I'm excited to share that with you. So she's gonna wheel over the, her veggies and I am going to bring the tarp over. The mint smells good walking by it. Yeah. So this is my parents' garden over here. And I haven't been out here in a long time. Pop-Pop's been maintaining it through the winter. They've got two raised beds and two good-sized pots. They usually put tomatoes in here. And my mom usually grows her... Um, Sugar snap sh peas and green beans. There, and then over here... Now this hasn't been weeded <laughs> That's this okay. spring yet. But look over here, I've got volunteer potatoes. Um, and I think Mark's plan was obviously to take these off. These are potato plants. Yeah. And go down as deep as he could to make three layers that we can um, do our indeterminate potatoes that will grow a new layer of potatoes every time you bury the plant, you leave about this much showing. You bury it up to this much showing and then it'll send out more potatoes so we can get a lot more potatoes in this smaller space but there's also some that have creeped out <laughs> and then they have some grapevines here and a pretty established rhubarb plant they got two of those my zucchinis go right here generally and rabbit food goes in here <laughs> because the rabbits they will jump up into my raised beds and one time my romaine was about this big and I was so happy and I went out to look and one of them was laying flat and I couldn't figure it out and upon investigation there was a rabbit nest underneath that <laughs> that um, romaine and it was all lined with rabbit fur. So my son-in-law came and made this and look it's on hinges. That's cool. To and make it easy to plant harvest weed and then close it back. So what goes in here is uh, lettuce, chard, kale, onions. They'll eat my onion tops down to the ground in one day <laughs> if I don't put them in here. Um, and he made it tall enough so it can rest on the bed behind it? Well, and the rat, the deer would come and eat the tops of the lettuce. I used to do it with chicken wire, but they could push the chicken wire down and take a bite out of the top of each head of lettuce. It was kind of frustrating. Nobody likes peppers and tomatoes. Squirrels used to eat the tomatoes, but I think the, the, the uh, culprit bit the dust our first garden year. So he didn't pass the genes down. There's plenty <laughs> of squirrels, but we've not lost any more tomatoes to them. But things like the tomatoes and the peppers, um, the spicy things go in here and uh, the predator, not predators, what would they be? Pests? Pests. The, the pests. <laughs> Don't eat them. We are building a deer fence around the garden at our house and what inspired me to possibly grow grapes along the deer fence are my parents. Now, how old are these great plants? Three years old? Um, and yeah, at least. I don't think we planted them the first year we were here. Maybe we did down at the bottom, we planted some, but we never did anything with them and didn't water them. Do deer these eat get water? Yes, I'll tell you oh. what happens. Well, then maybe I don't plant deer. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you what happens, the whole thing gets filled with grapes and every day you come out and sample because you don't want to pick them green because they don't ripen once you pick them yeah. but the minute they're ripe we've come out and every one that deer can access without being on this side of the fence is gone well so maybe I won't do share. that it's share. <laughs> maybe I won't do that so my mom is going to go ahead and get the rest of her little seedlings planted up so her peas she's gonna plant on the back side and then her lettuce and chard and I'm going to take these home, which I'm really excited about. And then her onion starts look oh, so much better than mine did. I hope my onions come back. So this is what my mom has here. She has one, two, three, four tiers of strawberries. This tier here is lettuce and arugula, spinach, leafy greens. And then the top up here is thyme, parsley, sage, parsley, and oregano. So how you water is you water from the top and those gray discs are what distribute the water all the way down. So you don't have to water the outside of it, just the first time when you plant it to get everything established. 
and then from there on out you just have to water the top. If you are direct sowing seeds into your green stock, you definitely want to keep watering those from the sides until those seeds germinate. Seeds are a lot more finicky than starts and once a seed gets wet and starts to sprout, if it dries out before it has sprouted completely, the seed is going to die. So <laughs> seeds are a little bit different. I've never grown directly from seed in my green stocks before, but I plan to this year. So that little spout, my mom just directed that spout away from her house because when she waters it from the top, any of the extra water, she doesn't want it going toward her house. So that's why we have that tube facing away. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean up my dad's patio. And again, that tarp was a brilliant idea from my dad. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So here is my mom's green stock. I'm going to head to my house and get mine started. So there it is. Isn't it beautiful? It looks I awesome. think it's gorgeous. Thank you, Becky. You're I welcome. really appreciate it. It's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited about it. So I'm going to go home and start planting some of my green stalks, but happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you so much. I just got home and last weekend I pressure washed this patio and I kind of pushed all the furniture to one side over here and I never did anything more with it. I put the grill back, I put the rugs back by the doors and that's all I did. I didn't do anything with this furniture. So I think before I get started on planting these green stalks out, because I still need to think exactly what I'm gonna plant in what green stalk, I am gonna go ahead and kind of organize this patio just a bit so that I'm kind of working with a more organized space. So I feel like I'll be able to kind of think a little bit better and I'll think about what I'm gonna do while I organize this. I started a ton of things from seed to plant out that I was planning to put in my planters, but one of them did not work at all. I planted an entire flat of petunias. They were just petunia seeds I got at my local grocery store. And I need to research that more because they <laughs> I had one out of hundreds of seeds sprout. So I did go to the local nursery and I picked up some petunias because from the beginning of having one, well, no, I shouldn't say it from the beginning of having one. From last year's garden, when I grew petunias for the first time and I saw how beautiful and viney they get and full, I thought, how beautiful would that be to have a tower of a green stalk just in petunias? So the seeds I started failed, so I purchased some when they were on sale from a local bo big box store. And I've been keeping those in the grow room because it's been too cold for them, but now our nighttime temperatures are in the high 50s, so it's totally safe unless we have some freak frost <laughs> that I should be able to plant them out. I also purchased quite a few other fun things. A bunch of this stuff was on sale. Some of it was 50% off and had tags on it. Some of it was not on sale that I just thought was pretty and I wanted to purchase. <laughs> and so I gave myself a ton of options, which was fun and awesome, but also extremely overwhelming. And I, I should not have given myself <laughs> so many options because I had kind of like analysis of paralysis or I don't know exactly the right whoop there we there they go <laughs> they're totally fine but I I just I overwhelmed myself so I as I was doing this I was thinking what am I going to do I've got all these different things and I just end up going back to my original plan my original plan was to have one just covered in petunias and one just covered in nasturtiums now I did start a ton of nasturtiums and I started an entire two flats of nasturtiums and they almost all sprouted. I probably had like a 98%, if not 99% germination rate. It was fantastic. And so I am really excited about that because nasturtiums at my local nursery, when I went to go pick up some of those other goodies, those vining plants, they were $4.99 for one nasturtium. And so I it was way more cost effective to buy a you know, two, three dollar seed packet and start my own because it's going to take a ton of nasturtium plants to plant out one entire nasturtium tower. Petunias were really affordable. I got those at a big box store on sale. They were two dollars for a six pack. And so that was very affordable to plant out an entire green stock with petunias, but it would have been pretty pricey to plant out an entire green stock with nasturtiums. So I'm super excited that my nasturtiums did really well. Well, And so I did the same thing that I did at my mom's house. I laid a tarp down. I filled all of them up at one time. That definitely is a time saver. 
And then I went ahead and I put the gray things in all of them before I started stacking them. The top layer does not want need one of these gray discs because it has a specific watering top to it. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get to it. But this was really great, getting these two filled up and ready to be planted in. Now we are ready to fill them. I went ahead and I decided I'm gonna put one right now in this corner and well, now I've, I don't know, because I have one here, one here, but then maybe do I want one over there? Because then I could see it from the kitchen window? Huh, I think so. I think we're gonna put the second one over in that corner. And what I did is I put the drainage tube going off the deck so that the water isn't pooling on the deck. I only have one more bag of potting soil, so I can't fill my other two green stalks. So this is what we're working with today. So I might run tomorrow and go get some more potting soil because I've got all these plants that need to be planted. I don't want to be responsible to try to keep them alive in the grow room when, because I have a ton of pots too. If you were here last year in the garden, I bought a ton of ter terracotta pots and I can plant a bunch of these flowers in those as well. I just need the soil in order to do that. But we will see how far we get with these plants. Let me show you what I bought. I got two different varieties of sweet potatoes. I thought that these were so pretty. This really lime bright green and this really dark purple leaf. I thought the contrast of that was stunning along with this silvery fuzzy creeping plant. I don't know what it is. This is what it is. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But I thought not only did the colors of these three go really well together, but the texture of this, because it's fuzzy versus smooth. And then of course I've got two big flats of petunias. I bought those the other day on sale. And then we have in here some white begonias. These will flower all summer long along with the petunias. What is this? I can't remember what I got. Lobelia, white lobelia. And I don't know what I'm planting and what. These plants were 50% off. And I think that they will come back once we get them planted. Over here, there's no flowers or anything on this yet, but there will be. I've never seen this before. This is another Lobelia, but it's a mix. So it's white, purple, violet, and some pink. And so I was just trusting that these were gonna go well. So it was buy to get one free, plus all of these were 25% off. I don't know why, but they were buy one, get one free, plus 25% off. So it was a fantastic price. And then I'm absolutely loving these. I got these in a couple different colors. And these are supposed to bloom all year, or all from spring to summer. So I tried to get plants that would bloom the whole season. So at this moment when I am stacking these, I still have not decided what I'm gonna do and I'm feeling overwhelmed. So I thought, you know what, instead of plant, uh, stacking one and then planting it out, I'm going to get everything stacked up, cleaned up, and then I'm going to start planting so that I can kind of have a clear head and figure out what I want to do with these planters. And you can see how once they have the soil in them, they snap together really easily. The weight of the soil really does help the stacking process quite a bit, and I'm counting how many I have to know how many I need to put into each tower. And you can see this is the top one. That's the watering top that you've put the water in and then it drips down the rest of the green stock. So here is the second one stacked up. So now I have both of them stacked and I'm gonna take this potting soil that fell onto my tarp and I'm gonna start filling my wine barrel planters. So I end up planting the wine barrel planters out the next day. And I think they turned out absolutely fabulous. I can't wait to show you how they turned out, but I don't wanna waste any of this potting soil. So I'm gonna get as much of it from the tarp into the planter as possible. All right, I've been thinking, I've been processing all the goodies that I have with the amount of potting soil I have. So from the beginning, I've said I want one green stalk that's petunias and one green stalk that's nasturtiums. I've lost sight of that just a little bit with having so much fun at the greenhouses. So what I'm gonna do today is I am going to get one green stalk full of petunias 
and one green stalk full of nasturtiums. And then in here, I'm gonna start planting some of the other goodies I got. And then when I get more potting soil, I'll put some goodies in there. I have a really big wine barrel. These are like, rep, uh, they're, they never had wine in them, but I have a wine barrel. And I think that I'm gonna make an herb garden for the patio so that this summer when I want herbs, I don't have to go all the way out to the main garden every time. I can just harvest some herbs on the patio. So let's get planting. When I first started gardening, I did not want to grow any flowers. <laughs> that was three years ago. I'm going into my fourth growing season this year. And all I wanted to grow were fruits and vegetables. And I didn't want any of my garden space being taken up by a silly flower because that's not practical. And I wanted to grow as much food as I could and eke out as much productivity out of my garden as possible. Well, my mindset has started to shift. And yes, I still want to grow as much food as possible, but I also want to create a beautiful environment for me, for you, where we can just enjoy the peace of the garden and not only enjoy the fruits of our labor, figuratively and literally by having food come out of our garden, but we can also just enjoy the beauty that a garden can hold. And yes, fruits and vegetables to me are absolutely beautiful, but flowers are really, really beautiful. And not only do they create beauty, but they also help draw in the pollinators. So I've really started to shift my mindset and just, I want my garden to be somewhere that is peaceful and beautiful and productive. And so that is why I have started to focus so much more on flowers as well as veggies. So we got that first tower completely filled with petunias and those are kind of a fuchsia color. Last year was my first year growing petunias and I had this deep purple that I thought was absolutely beautiful and that's what I wanted to grow again, but they did not have those at my local greenhouse or that was not a local greenhouse. I bought those petunias out. I got them at Home Depot when they were on sale. They did not have that deep purple. So I bought the color that they had that I liked the most. Now these nasturtiums are pretty overgrown. They probably should be planted out in the ground a week and a half ago or so, if not two or three weeks ago, but it was still frost. So I had to wait until I could plant them out and they end up coming back. I, I was a little worried about them thinking that they were a little leggy and they weren't going to survive the transplant, but they look really, really good right now. I actually gave them a haircut a couple days later and they're starting to fill out really nicely. So my goal for both of these flower towers is for the flowers and the foliage to completely take over this tower my vision is you won't actually see the planter at all. You're just gonna see one big tower of flowers. And with the nasturtiums that I have planted in this one, I'm looking for a empty spot. I have three different varieties of nasturtiums. And then here is a new tray. This was a tray I started about two and a half or three weeks after I started that initial one. So you can see that they're a lot smaller but I needed more to fill this out. And so I originally was going to have the green stock with the nasturtiums be all one variety of nasturtiums, but I didn't start enough because I didn't do the math. It would have been simple math to know how many plants I needed to fill it out, but I didn't do that math when I started them. So I have three different varieties of nasturtiums Actually, I think I have four different varieties of nasturtiums in that green stock. I have Tip Top Rose. Um, I, would, I guess I would have to look. We started them all together, but we got the two towers planted out. So I'm going to go ahead and wash the deck because I just pressure washed it. So I wanted to try to keep it as clean as possible. And that was a really productive day. So I'm I'm starting to build my my dream garden of having all the fruits and vegetables and flowers as I possibly can have. And so this is just the start of something pretty exciting. So you can see here how you fill it from the top. They actually now, they just came out with a watering system. I do not have the watering system. I, I'm really excited about the watering system. I just haven't gotten, I haven't purchased the watering system yet. So um, that's something that I'm going to have to look into. And then this hose 
is a hose that I think was left from the previous owner and it's broken. And so I'm just doing my best to try to make a little bit of pressure at the end so that I can clean the patio. <laughs> I could have grabbed a different hose with an attachment. I couldn't screw anything onto the end of the hose because it was broken, but I, I was just, I was trying to get it done with what I had. I got a little too caught up having fun at the greenhouses because I came back to the simplicity of what I wanted from the very beginning and I absolutely love it. Here is our first green stock filled with petunias. We're going to plant fun things in here and then over here just beautiful green nasturtiums. Every single cell has an nasturtium in it. I was getting overwhelmed thinking of all the different plants I bought and what I was gonna do. I gotta turn the water off before I forget because last time I watered in the garden, I forgot to turn it off and I don't wanna do that again today. So last time, or last time, I'm getting tired. When I was trying to figure out what I was gonna plant in these, cause these are the leaves. They have the shorter cells. I was just getting overwhelmed thinking, because I gave myself too many options. But I now know what I'm gonna do with these other ones. From the very beginning, from last year, I wanted one petunia green stock, one nasturtium green stock, and I have it, <laughs> I'm really grateful for it. So in my, uh, my green stocks that are original that have the wider, that's where I'm gonna have fun with planting out some of these sweet potatoes and this creeping vine and some of these beautiful colorful flowers, our begonias, our, what are these again? Our lobelia, and a bunch of these petunias are gonna be going into the garden. And I'm just really excited about the possibility of what we have here. And then I'm really happy with the idea of taking my other really large wine barrel and making that an herb garden for the patio because then it'll be uplifted so little critters like my dogs can't get into it and I'll be able to just come straight from the kitchen and harvest some herbs. Now I really need to take a shower because I've got dirt all over. I was definitely not wearing garden appropriate shoes but I just got out here, I started working and I never went and changed even though my boots are right by this back door. But we made great progress. But I'm really glad I do not have to make dinner tonight. We had dinner in the crock pot. I'm gonna get this shut. Our grow room needs to be shut. I'll give you a little sneak peek here. Peppers, tomatoes, peppers, peppers, peppers. All sorts of fun things that are gonna be going out in the garden in a matter of a week. This rest of this week is supposed to be at night in the 40s and then next week. 50s so that's exciting so let's go inside and see how dinner turned out all right i just got in it smells good i just took the lid off it basically cooked on keep warm all day long because i started this what was it like 6 50 this morning and it's now five o'clock so it's been going for a long time and i'm glad that i put it on keep warm because it is pretty dark and if i had cooked it on low it would be completely burnt so let's see how this is for the side. We're just gonna have salad. I have a spring mix in the refrigerator and some salad dressing, so nothing fancy. But let's cut into this and see how well I did on this. It could be that I just overcooked it because it was in the crock pot way too long. If not anything, it smells good. We're gonna give it a try. It's cutting really nicely. is very interesting. I've definitely never done anything like this in a crock pot before. So it did get a little bit dark on the outside, but the inside part looks really good. The outside part might be going to the chickens, but let's try what the, the inside tastes like. It holds up really nicely. I, sometimes I don't like cooking things in the crock pot because I feel like they kind of get watery, but this isn't watery at all. It's hot. It's good. It's really good. I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10. It is, it's good. I mean, it's gonna be a really nice dinner. The outside definitely is a little overcooked, but we can totally eat around it. It doesn't, the, the I mean, it's burnt, but it doesn't um, flavor the rest of it. 
And this is really good. This is gonna be a good dinner. It's gonna be a good lunch. Will I make this again? Yes, I will try it again, but I don't think I'm gonna cook it on a day that I'm gonna be gone all day or for most of the day because I do feel like this is something that you should be here so you can turn it off. Because <laughs> Josh has been busy, he's been working today. And I wasn't gonna ask him to manage it because he wouldn't even probably know what to look for. So this is gonna be good dinner tonight. It's gonna taste really good because I'm tired. I've worked hard today. And food always tastes better when you're tired. So I'm gonna go shower before we sit down to eat dinner. And then we're just gonna have a simple dinner. I just wanna say thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me and my mom and getting some fun, exciting things. Oh my goodness, I can see the green stalks out there. This is really fun. I can see the pink on that. So hopefully my goal for this is for it to just be one big pink mass. And then over here we can see the green stalk with the nasturtiums and you can see the green and I hope that that will just be one big green mass as well. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. If you enjoyed this, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you are having a fantastic day, friend, and I cannot wait to see you next time. Bye.